Okay, so today I want to talk to you about the gradient and radial filter tools and how they are used in the new version of Lightroom CC. One of the great benefits of both of these tools now is that you can use an adjustment brush to reduce the effect of those filters within parts of your image. Here we're going to start off with an image of a model on a beach. Now I chose this shot, it's a, an older image, um, essentially because the background is slightly blown out, it's a great way to show you how to use this tool. On the right hand side here, um, we've got the gradient filter tool, which is what we're going to use. We're already in the develop module, so by clicking that tool there, coming over here, and dragging down, we're going to add a gradient over the top of this file. Now, as we can see, we've brought up the adjustment panel. Um, we've already discussed here the highlights are a little bit blown out um, and uh, there's not enough detail there. The sky is slightly overexposed and there's also not enough contrast, not enough saturation. Um, if we were just going to do a very quick edit to this image, which is effectively what I'm showing you here, first port of call would be to um, drop the exposure a little bit. There we go. Added some major pop into there straight away and also a highlights adjustment. If we click the Y button to bring up the before and after already, we can see quite a major change to the image just by actually doing that straight away. Um, the rest of the image is of course left unaffected and the majority of the effect is seen at the top of the image where we put the tool in place. Saturation is boosted quite nicely. Okay, in terms of this feature, what we're going to do now is we're going to select the brush tool from the right hand side menu. Now, Coming over here, we can obviously adjust the size of the brush, but what you will notice, at the moment, there's a plus in the middle of the brush tool, uh, which is where you are adding things into the image. What we want to do is hit the Alt key. So, by hitting the Alt key straight away and pressing and holding that key, you will see that we have put a minus sign into the brush that we're about to use. Increase the size of the brush. And what I want to do is to effectively erase away some of the effect of the gradient filter tool from this shot. Basically to keep the model's skin in the same colour tone as it was originally. So we're going to take that over the face as well. I'm going to come right up onto that hairline. There we go. Okay. So very quick and very, very easy. And already we can see that's had quite an effect. Go back there um, and we can see, obviously, the benefits of that particular tool. We'll take that away now. We'll go back to our before and after. Kick in the preview screens there. Let's have a little look at the image on a black background. And once again, straight away, there's quite a, a, an increase in the punch and vibrancy to that shot. That was a lifestyle photo shoot. Potentially, um, that file could be sent off straight away. We could use that and print that one out for the client. Alternatively, we could send that file over to Photoshop CC and we can make some additional edits in that particular program. Before we dash off, uh, I'll show you a couple of other things that I would do just in terms of finishing this particular image. I'll take off that. One thing that I'd probably do is to make the exposure a little bit more even. So we're back onto our main panel here. Um, a highlight correction can be made, just darkening down the highlights a little bit. We'll throw some additional light into the shadows, so we go just picking out a little bit more shadow detail. Um, what we would like to do is to add a little bit of vibrance in there as well, just into the parts of the image that are currently desaturated. Coming down here, um, we've got the curves tool. We're going to add a very tiny S curve into this just to add a little bit of pop. There we go. And back to our before and after. another example of using the gradient tool again on this image here. Now this is uh, relatively evenly exposed at the start but we'll still show you how this works. So obviously the photo is off on a slight angle. I'm going to pull my gradient tool off at a slight angle as well. Okay so pull that down to just above the horizon. And there we go. And let's just bring back some of those highlights. Let's drag those back a little bit and let's pull the exposure down. Okay, just to darken that little band across the top, like so. 
Now, as we can see, uh, we've actually not really made much of an impact onto the model's face. If I drag that really far back down, then obviously we are going to start to make quite a significant impact. At this stage, I'll show you how the brush works. I've done this, obviously, just to make it a little bit more extreme. Back again, I've already gone over this once, it's just to show you it with a different image. Click the brush tool, there we go, and come back over, see the plus sign in the middle of the brush. We're going to press the Alt key, turn that into a minus, and then I'm going to adjust the brush size, and I'm just going to delete that away uh, from the model's face. So I'm going to shrink that brush size down, go back in, keep working this. Like so, and what we're doing here is erasing the changes that the gradient tool has made to the model's face. Now, if I increase that there, the effect will still be working down here, so we'll just delete that off slightly. Now, obviously, there we've got an entirely different image to the way that this actually looked at the start. Now, I'm not saying that this is exactly where we want to be. First image is obviously um, quite evenly balanced. This one is quite heavily dark. Looks like there's a storm brewing in the background on this particular shot. What I will do is leave the gradient tool in place. Just pull the exposure back up a little bit. And it gives me an opportunity to play around to adjust everything from the color temperature, like so. We can pull that over and make it warmer. Um, or we can pull that over and make it a lot cooler in terms of the blue sky. And then again, obviously we can change the tint, and all of this is now happening without us effectively affecting where the model's face is, and the effects are not taking place over the model's face in this particular image anymore. Boost a little bit of saturation into that shot, there we go, and let's click that to take that away. Let's have a look at that from a before and an after shot. There we go, um, that's another example of the gradient tool and the ability to mask away the effects of the gradient tool over certain sections of your photograph. Great feature that's been introduced into Lightroom CC is the ability to um, merge files um, into HDR straight within the software itself. If we look down here, we've got um, three individual files. Um, let's have a click through these, all at different exposures. These are taken in Leeds City Centre. All of these are shot at F13, ISO 100, various different exposures. And what we're going to do is select the three files together um, by pressing the Command key. Now, once we've got the um, command key pressed, we can press Control and single click, and that will open up the menu setting here. If we go to Photo Merge and then to HDR, it will give us a option where we are creating a HDR preview. And actually, right within Lightroom now, those files have been blended together to create one single HDR file from our raw images. Um, which we will then be able to process in Lightroom directly. It's going to take a little bit of uh, a bit of time just for this to run through. Whilst we're here, um, you've got a number of options. We've got the Auto Align and Auto Tone. Don't need to use either of those. Um, there's no need to de-ghost anything in here um, as such. There's nothing really moving. Now, I'm not saying that Lightroom is perfect at this and that you shouldn't be using another piece of HDR software which to be fair, and um, there are pieces of software out there which do this better, but this is a very good way, very quick way to actually process some images. I'm now going to um, press merge. We've got an example on screen of the HDR file. So I shall press that. We can notice in the top left hand corner of the screen that the software is actually running through creating the HDR image. And when that's done, it will actually create and load that image straight away into Lightroom in the original place. And that will pop up in the navigation menu at the bottom where you've got access to your library of images. Um, one of the problems with this, as, as great as it is, is that the, um, the technology that underpins Lightroom's HDR 
is in my opinion not as good as something like Photomatix. Um, however, um, it's still a uh, an interesting piece of software to use and does give you just a, another quick option to process some images. Once we've got this in here, we can then directly edit the HDR file without needing to take this through to Photoshop. And then if we wished, we could export directly out of Lightroom um, as a TIFF file, um, obviously as a JPEG. You could do whatever you wish. Or alternatively, if you want to continue processing that image, you can then take that through to Photoshop uh, where you can continue to work on the file. The image has now appeared down here, and this is actually our HDR file, um, which is loading now. Once that file's loaded, uh, I'll be able to show you a little bit about what we can do with that. Now here, straight away, this will contain all of the dynamic range of the three images that we've just processed. So very quickly, we can see the highlights are a little bit bright. We can drag those highlights back in quite easily. There we go. We can increase details in the shadow areas and then we can take down the overall exposure as well, if we so wish. Once again here, we can boost a little bit of the vibrance and saturation in the image. Um, we can play around with the black levels. Obviously, we've got more detail in there than in any of the original single shot files. As I'm playing around with this now, um, clearly you can see that we're making some change. I'm going to pull these highlights all the way over there just to bring those through. Um, pop a little bit of a curve into this, and just to lift the image a little bit. Add a bit of pop by dragging those shadows back down again. Now, once again, I haven't actually clicked the profile correction. Um, I'll do that and just have a little look at what that looks like now. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna press the crop tool. Um, I think the verticals are slightly out on this one, so we're gonna make a, a little adjustment. And obviously this is not the greatest of shots, but this is just going to give you a quick idea as to how quickly you can actually process an image in Lightroom. And there we go, I'll straighten that up quite nicely now. Okay, so there you go. We literally have um, an image that we've dragged some additional detail out of. Uh, if we go back and look at our previous images, which are obviously non-HDR shots, that's a slightly overexposed image back to the underexposed image for highlights and the mid exposure which is probably the one that we can compare the new file to there we go we can see we've dragged out a lot more detail if i wanted to play around with this a little bit more obviously we can go back in we can use an adjustment brush i'm pressing k as a keyboard shortcut here um, i'm going to increase the clarity I'm going to increase the exposure slightly and add a little bit of saturation. And we're just gonna maybe pick out the front of that building here. There we go. Just adding a bit more detail into the lighting there. Likewise, just a couple of these lights here which are standing out. Uh, I'm gonna press K again, come back to a different, uh, different setting, take that down a little bit. I'm gonna increase some shadow detail. I'm gonna pull out a little bit more detail just in these buildings here. Now, obviously, this is not precision work. I'm just doing this to give you a quick idea as to what you can do with the image. Take the gradient filter tool, which we mentioned before, uh, and I'll drag that down over the top of the image like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to lift the shadows, but I am going to pull the exposure down a little bit into that sky there too. There we go. So it's pulling the exposure down. Um, we're going to use the same technique that I showed you earlier on, which was using the brush tool. Um, and if you remember from before, to erase that effect on the building, as you can see, it's darkened down the building, which I don't want it to do. All we have to do is press the Alt key. You'll see the plus sign in the middle of the brush. Go to a minus. There we go. I'm going to decrease the size of the brush slightly. That's better. And then I'm just going to take that over the building so we can go back to our original exposure. And at the top here, I'm going to shrink the brush down again. There we go. Just to bring a little bit of extra detail out in that building at the top. There we go. That's much better. Okay. 
So, there you go. Um, a very, very quick edit of a HDR file. All done within Lightroom. Um, and very, very good tool. Nice to see that included here in Lightroom this time. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment below. Um, obviously, remember to subscribe through to my channel. And hopefully, we'll be providing some more tutorials in the coming weeks for you. Thank you very much.